Greetings, Julia Kong. This is going to be a fun talk. We'll be talking about parentheses and commas and white space and semicolons, all, all the things programmers love the most. This talk is called Do Syntax Consider Harmless? And I'm Nikolaj Werneck. And the subject of this talk was inspired by a couple of pull requests I did recently, but they have a bit of a common theme, <clears throat> and I like to put it as uh, something that surrounds the use of do syntax, which is uh, this Julia language construct that I find very cool. And what's so cool about it? First of all, it's a pretty unique thing to Julia. A few languages have some similar things, like Haskell also has a do keyword that works a little bit similar. I'm not sure what was the original inspiration for the Julia do syntax but I started using it more and more and I like it a lot and I think the main reason I like it is because it works very well together with all kinds of functional combinators functions such as map, filter and reduce I think most people use it only uh, with open when you open a file and you apply a function to the data, right? but actually the syntax can be used for a lot more uh, and these combinators, I believe, they can be very effectively used to write computer programs without any for loops. Okay, so you can get rid of for loops. Now, I think many people listen to this and think, oh, this is crazy, why I want to do this? Well, we can talk about this later. One thing I also think it's cool about do syntax is that it looks a little bit like currying or a form of partial application. You can see that usually you would have these two parameters there, but the way we write, you end up having map with a single parameter. Of course, this is not, you're not really creating a partial application function there, but I just think it's cool that it looks like that. <clears throat> so how you would I like to avoid for loops? Um, I think this is a bit of a natural step after what happened with the creation of the for loop itself. Uh, well, abandoning go to. So this is what some people call the creation of structured programming. But actually, I believe, well, many people believe that the, the for loop is still a little bit too flexible. It's not very specific. It lacks an accurate meaning. Just like from a single go to, you cannot tell you're doing a loop. Okay. Uh, so we can be more strict and specific when we use this functional combinator, such as map filter reduce. And if we go back to Edsche Wiebe Dijkstra, the great uh, Dutch programmer, if you look at the original paper uh, titled The Go-To Statement Considered Harmful, one very insightful uh, sentence there is that he believed we should uh, strive to shorten the conceptual gap between the static program and the dynamic process, right? So it's the program is what you write and the dynamic process is the effect we want the program to have. And that was one way to do it. So I, I believe if we try to get rid of for loops, we are doing this further. Also about this topic about uh, structures that are more constrained and how it can actually help you uh, write programs. I highly recommend the talk by Luna Biarson, Constraints Liberate and Liberties Constraint. So that's a bit of my inspiration. And can it be done? So I, I basically, I have been programming Julia for a couple of years now. And I was asking myself, can I actually try to be effectively write all my code without any for loops? Uh, so a bit of my conclusion is that if you're doing simple things, yes. Uh, but more complex tasks, you end up at some point say, ah, I need a for loop for this then just to get the job done. And this special help is, happens when you have problems with filtering and nested loops. And then I was thinking, how can you actually improve on this? And based on actual my experience with functional programming, I noticed that just by having uh, 
access to flatten and flat map functions. This would solve a lot of problems. And another, another source of problems is the fact that we don't have a, a default optional class that's iterable in Julia. So that's one thing that would uh, help also. So to illustrate a bit what I'm trying to do, here we have one for loop that's pushing values into an array. So this would be a map, okay? Uh, there is one way to write this in Julia without using a for loop, which is using list comprehension, but also with do syntax and the map combinator, you can achieve the same thing as well. So basically, I would like to be able to do what I did with the list A3, just as much as I have been able to do with these other techniques. So I'm just I would like to see the do syntax to be as powerful as these other ways to express this program. And here's an example where it gets a bit more complicated. So as you can see, so this is a problem where we have uh, a nested loop and a filtering. And with list comprehensions, we can actually achieve it. But then using do syntax, I had to define here my, my, a flat map function. Of course, I could just written uh, flatten outside, but the point is that this is going to be more easy to use, okay, if I have the flatten function there. And as you can see, I use a form of uh, iterable optional to get this done, although this is not the only way. So anyway, uh, one PR already merged was just to add this flat map to the uh, iterators module. Uh, another interesting PR uh, is something that allows us to create uh, an iterator from a function using uh, the syntax. So shout out to TKF and Selen Grab for helping with those PRs and other many people who talk there. And yeah, I have a couple other PRs that I see as uh, related to this idea that we can make life better for people who are trying to not use for loops. Mm, so, conclusion, uh, <clears throat> do syntax in Julia is something that I find that encourages the use of functional combinators. Uh, it's still not entirely possible to, to get away with doing this, but I think we have a few steps we can enable this strictly based, this style strictly based on do syntax in Julia. I think it's very close to that. And it's interesting, something interesting to try out. I would suggest you one day to investigate if life is possible without for loops. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. It's a great pleasure to be here at JuliaCon. See you around.